Ayan po, magandang, 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 magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Tayo po ay tumayo at kung may mga nasa labas pa po, tayo po ay pumasok na sa Wiley Chapel. Ayan. Ayun, good afternoon po. At welcome po sa Simbang Pinoy, LA Filness, kung saan walang bida-bida. At si Jesus lang ang... Again, again, again. Si Jesus lang ang bida. Bida. Amen. Ayun. Sabihin mo naman sa katabi mo, I'm happy that you're here. And please silent your phone. Ayun. Silent na natin yung mga phone natin para makakapunan ng tutunog-tunog. Diba? <laughs> Ayun. So, I just want to share this verse, a short verse from Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Sabi po dito, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen po ba doon? Sa Tagalog ang sabi po, ang kagalahang dulot ni Yahweh ang magpapalakas sa ating lahat. Amen. Kaya ngayon, tayo ay magalak, magsaya, kalimutan na ang lahat ng problema. Si Lord na ang bahala dyan. At sabay-sabay tayong magpuri sa Kanya. Amen. Amen. Tayo po ay bumalakpak, umawit at sumayaw. God, ngayong hapo ito. And as we continue, let me just read to you what it says. Sabi po sa Psalms 51, verses 10 to 12. It says here, this is King David talking to God. Sabi niya, create in me a clean heart 
O God, renew a loyal spirit within me. Or it says, renew a steadfast spirit within me. In verse 12, it says here, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to obey you. So let's just take this time as we continue to worship God. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to just move in our hearts. And let's be unhindered as we worship God today. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing this together. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our, we sing this. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let worship God. Let's just, let's just come before Him. Lord, search our hearts, God. If there is anything, God, that is not right before you, Panginoon, we lay it down at your feet. Lord, we ask for forgiveness. We come in repentance before you, Lord. And thank you, God, because you said in your word, as we humble ourselves, God, that you receive us, God. You forgive us. You make us as white as snow. Thank you, God. We just humble ourselves before you, God, as a church, as a family, as individuals, Lord. Have your way in us, God.
As we sing this next song, may this be our prayer of our heart and just let go of all the hindrances, distraction, and just come back to the heart of worship. God is waiting for us. Just come back to the heart of worship. Just to pray something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you Search much deeper within through the waiting of you. You're looking into my heart. Let's sing it this way. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about. about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship the Lord. King of endless word. King of endless word. No one could express how much you deserve. No one wait bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song it is. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the waiting of your It's all 
to him if there are hindrances disruptions just say it to the Lord and he will help you he will guide us the God our God is just waiting for us he will not judge you just come back to the worship come back to his worship he's just waiting for us hallelujah Jesus is looking into our hearts. Truly, God is looking into our hearts. And we just need to just surrender everything to Him. Because for sure, He will forgive us from all the things that we did, that we said, mga naisip natin, that is not pleasing to Him. And here we are, Lord, coming back to You, coming back to Your worship. Bringing more than a song and dedicating our lives to you. May you use us mightily for your glory alone because you deserve all glory, praise, and honor. Hallelujah. Please guide our preacher today, Pastor Judd. May you anoint him and cover him with your Holy Spirit as he delivers your message. And prepare our hearts, Lord, and our minds to receive your message today. And may we apply it and share it to others. We dedicate this day to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good afternoon po, everyone. Let's go around. Let's bump one another. Say hi and hello as we sing Halina Sama Sama. Amen.
Ganda nga po. Mas magaganda pa kaysa po. Amen. Okay, let's pray for our kids, for our children. Almighty God in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that came upon our children, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of them, Lord God. Lord, today, Lord, we lift up to you our children, our teachers, Lord God, the parents, Lord, to bless them with good health, protection, and wisdom. Lord, guide them always, Lord God, your way, Lord God, not their own way, Lord. Lord, we also lift up the church, Lord God, to your guidance. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, L.A. Phil Naz. Hallelujah. Palakpakan ulit natin si Lord for this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Ayan. Kamusta yung naman yung katabi mo? Sabi mo, kamusta ka ngayon? Lost and found. There you go. <laughs> Naiwan sa galaan. <laughs> okay. Um, hello. Let's uh, turn off all our cell phones. Yahoo. There you go. Welcome to uh, Walk Through the New Testament, the Gospel of Mark series. Napansin niyo ba? Halos sa uh, isang taon na tayo. Hindi, nagpas. Ano? Past one year. No, we are, we are into the gospel of Mark. Let's have a series recap ang nakaraan pre previously on para Netflix no. So, ay ah, gumana. There you go. So, last time we were in the gospel of Mark, uh, it was March 17, we talk about letting go, letting go and following God. All right? It's in Mark 10:23 to 31. We talked about, you know, the great paradox of uh, saving yourself, losing your salvation, losing whatever you have here, then saving yourself in the future, right? Uh, it is like uh, the, your possessions versus the kingdom, you know. So we focus more of uh, let's, uh, let go of what we have and follow God. This is the continuation of the reach uh, man, no, the rich guy who wants to follow Jesus and failed. But for this afternoon, tell the person next to you, I'll talk about Bartimaeus. Are you familiar with Bartimaeus? The healing of Bartimaeus. Who among you here, you know, who needs healing personally? Raise your hands. There you go. Who among you here, who knows a person? That is so close to you, family, a close friend, a family relative or whatsoever. Who needs healing? Raise your hands. There you go. Today, I believe that the Lord will strengthen our faith. Amen? 
And through His Word, the power of His Word, we will be reminded how faithful our God is. And He is the God who heals. Amen? Amen. And let's talk about a blind man healed in Mark 10, the continuation of the chapter 10, 46 to 52. What are our learning to ponder for this afternoon? Number one, we'll talk about the, the very importance of crying out loud. Number two, we need to get near, we need to draw near to God and utter our request. Amen? And number three, we will appreciate the answer. All right? So, let's start. Okay, so sit back and relax. All right? And let's watch this recap. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Amen. And uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for this church is focused on delivering only what is your word. Bless the heart of your people. Anoint their ears as they listen to you. Preach the word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now let's discover God's word, amen? So in Mark 10, verses 46 to 52, we're always using Christian standard Bible. That is just my preference, okay? You can use whatever standard, uh, whatever version you want, okay? So this is not a cult that you need to use CSV also. That is just my preference, okay? So a blind man healed. His name is Bartimaeus. In verse 46, it says, they came to Jericho, you know, familiar with the wall. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartim uh, 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 as, he, as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, who's the son of Timaeus, sa Tagalog, anak ni Mang Timo, a blind beggar was sitting by the road, right? So, this is a picture of a blind man, clinically blind, okay? Kumbaga, pwede siya magroon ng disabled pass, all right? In verse 46, let's look at in our language. Dumating si Jesus sa Jericho, Nagpapalis na siya kasama ang kanyang mga alagad. At marami pang iba. May nadaanan silang isang bulag na nakaupo sa tabi ng daan at namamalimos. Siya si Bartimeo, na anak ni Timoteo. Ni, Tim, ni Timeo. Okay, Bartim, Barti, Bartimeus is different from Barte, Bartolomeu. Bartolomeu is one of the disciples. All right? In Filipino... Bartolomeu is Bartolome, okay? The, the name of my father, Bartolome. His name is Bartolome Giwa Jr. Puti na lang ako naging deterred, alright? But Bartimeus is Bartimeo in Tagalog. Anak ni Timeo, alright? Son of Timeus. In verse 47, when he heard 
that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Nang marinig ng bulag na nagdaraan ay si Jesus na taga Nazareth, sumigaw siya ng sumigaw, Jesus, anak ni David, mahabag po kay sa akin. In verse 48, many warned him to keep quiet. But he was crying out loud, crying out all the more, Have mercy on me, son of David! Pinagsabihan siya ng mga taong naroroon upang tumahimik. Ngunit lalo pa siyang nagsisigaw, Anak ni David! Mahanag, ma- mahabag po kayo sa akin. Learning to ponder number one. Look at the person next to you. Tell that person, cry out loud. Not now, but we'll talk about cry out loud. You see, babies, <laughs> babies cry. <laughs> exacto, no? Babies cry. <laughs> Narinig tayo ni, mano, <laughs> ni Maya. Babies cry because it is their most effective way of communicating whenever they are what? Hungry. Right? Just like her husband. He also cries when he's hungry. <laughs> Whenever they are in pain or they need hugs, right? They cry whenever they need hugs, right? So look at you, Maya. There you are. <laughs> look at when she's crying. Oh, when Ate Raisel uh, gave her a hug, so she stopped. When, she, when uh, mommy gave her a dede or a milk, she stopped, right? It's her way of communicating that she needs something. TIP. We must consider the following when we cry out to God. When we say crying out to God, it means praying to God. Amen? Number one, we must consider being persistent. Look at the person next to you. Tell that person, persist- tell that person persistence. persistence. Okay, what do we mean by persistence? You see, persistence is the key. No? Help will be on its way if you're persistent. Help will be on its way because probably the helper is annoyed because you're persistent in crying out loud. Remember the story of the persistent widow and the unjust judge? The judge didn't help the widow because he wanted to help her. No way. He helped her because he was annoyed of the persistent widow crying out, oh, yeah, judge, every day, judge, judge. Persistence is annoying the helper. Second is that help will be on your way because of the characteristic of the helper. Because the helper is a loving God or a loving person and a compassionate one. Just like the mother's love. Right? Look at the person next to you. Kunana yan. Sabi mo sa kanya, thank you for your love. Right? Look at our nagagandahang nanay. Di ba? Saan ka pa? Kung persistent lang kayo manghihingi sa kanila ng food, bibigyan nila kayo. Right? So, we're talking about crying out loud to God. We're talking about praying to Him. We need to be persistent. At the same time, we need to know the helper. Hello? We need to know the, the God who we are asking help to. It says here, but he was crying out all the more. He was crying out, Love her mercy on me, son of David. He knows who he is. Anak ni David, mahabag po kayo sa akin. He knows Jesus who Jesus is. He knows that he is the son of David. He knows he's from the kingdom of David, uh, Judah. He knows he's from the lineage of the great King David. How about you? You don't go to a person that you don't know. If you need help, you go to the right person. In Filipino, sa tamang connection, right? But here, he knows how to connect. He knows who is crying. He, he, he knows who the helper is. Know who is your helper. 
How do we know who is our helper, pastor? We need to pray. You see, prayer is a monologue. Lord, this is the ACTS or ACTS. A for adoration. Lord, I worship you. I adore you. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. C for confession. Forgive me, Lord, for what I did, what I thought of, the sin. I repent to you, Lord. And, and T for thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings and all the, the testimonies that I'm giving because you answered all my prayer. And S are for the supplication, Lord. Patamaan niyo ako sa loto. Ay, mali yun, ha? Lord, thank you, Lord God. Please heal my, my friend who has cancer. That is supplication. That's ACTS Acts. But that is monologue. You are speaking to God, just you. You see, it becomes a dialogue when God answers to your pray, answer your prayers. All right? How God answers your prayer. Hindi naman siya sumasa. He's not that that God who you will listen to an audible voice. He answers and it becomes a dialogue when he answers you when you read the Bible. Amen? You see, reading the word is important. It becomes a dialogue when he answers to you through a sermon. Who among you heard from the Lord just listening to a sermon? Raise your hands. You really, the Lord really talked to you. Oh, this is me. He's talking to me. Really? Lord, you, you, you are here. You're really talking to me. He's talk, the, the pastor is talking about me. You see, sermons are very important. And I thank you. We're, the chapel is filled today. And the weather has nothing to do with you being here. Amen? Because it is more blessed to come here wet and soaked by the rain because the gospel is important to you. You see, you come to the church, hear the sermon. That is worship. You don't come here at tumambay sa labas at makipagkwentuhan. We have lots of time for that. Amen? I mean, we, we do fellowship until 9 o'clock in the evening. Kahit kausap, you can talk to everybody else. Anybody, you can talk to them. But do not come to church and wait outside and start talking to anybody who's coming na apektuhan pati ng ibang tao. That's why I keep on telling the TANOD or our security force, it's just the two of them who will be outside to keep us safe. Amen? But the rest of us, it's sermon time. It is a time that I will listen to God and He will talk to my heart. Amen? Another thing is that know who is your helper. Sing songs of praise. How many of you who were healed by God, your heart is aching. And just by singing songs of praise, you felt that you are healed. Amen. Diba? How many of you who here who were driving, you were just listening to, you know, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Na, 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 na. Tapos, nasa four of, it, it was four or five, and it's all traffic, jam pack. And the person next to you is like, what on earth? It, what is he doing, right? And you were like, <laughs> no, because the Lord is speaking to your heart. Know who is your helper. Attend the clusters. Because the sermon on a Sunday is being discussed by you yourself personally. What do you think about the sermon? And you hear the different thoughts of the people within your D clusters. And you learn more and you learn more and you learn more. And you learn more about the great helper. You see, the Lord is my helper. Hebrews 13, 5, 6. It says there, keep your life free from the love of money. Be satisfied with all you have, with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Amen? Isn't it powerful? The word of God is powerful. You see, you can only develop your relationship with your helper if you spend time with him consistently. Not only just when you need him. Tell the person next to you, he's not a genie. Learn how to be grateful. You need to enjoy your presence. The Lord is not a genie. 
right? Learn how to be grateful, right? Okay, never, ever, you will experience the power of Jesus unless your faith will be developed first. Not because you have been a Christian for many years, length of time has nothing to do with it. Even if you believe just two minutes ago, you can experience His power. Amen? You see, experiencing the mighty power of God, tell the person next to you, you need faith. Need faith. Amen? Cyrus, you need faith. <laughs> okay? But if you have been walking in faith for years now, ang tagal mo ng Krisano, and still never find time to spend with Him, Hello, you are missing a lot. Then you become a powerless Christian. That answers your question. Pastor, why is it that my life hasn't, you know, it hasn't changed a lot? I feel like I'm not a victorious Christian. It's because, no, you have been walking in faith for years now and still never find time to spend with him. Sabi ni Billy Graham, according from Billy Graham, we cannot afford to be busy to pray. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Amen? In verse 49, it says here, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man and said to him, have courage, get up. He's calling for you. you know, the boss is calling for you. Tumigil si Jesus at kanyang sinabi, dalhin niyo siya rito. At tinawag nga nila ang bulag, lakasan mo ang iyong loob, tumayo ka. At ipinapatawag ka ni Jesus, sabi nila, the disciples said. In verse 50, he threw off his coat, right there and then, threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. Then Jesus answered him, what do you want me to do for you? Raboni. A blind man said to him, I want to see. He knows what he wants. Amen? Rabboni means master, teacher. Right? It is used as a Jewish title of respect applied specially to spiritual instructors and learned persons. Sabi ni Google. And verse 50, inihagis niya ang kanyang balabal, paluksong tumayo at lumapit kay Jesus. Ano ang gusto mong gawin ko para sa iyo? Tanong sa kanya ni Jesus. Sumagot ang bulag, Guro, gusto ko pong makakitang muli. Rabuni, master, teacher, guro. He knows who Jesus is. He knows that he is a rabbi. He knows that he is a teacher. He knows that he is the master. Amen? Learning to ponder number two. You need to get near. Get up. Show your coat. No? And utter the request. Utter the request to the rabbi, to the master, to the teacher. What do you mean by this? Pass forward 2024. We need to be available for God. You need something, but you don't have time for God. Hello? Right? I need healing, but it's raining. It's been raining in Manila. Hindi ako magcha church today. Especially during time of distress, draw near to him. Hello? Respond to his calling. You have to draw near. You have to do something. You need to move just like the blind man. He's blind, but he knows what to do. He threw up his balabal, his coat, and jumped up and moved. You see, you want to witness a miracle happen, take what is yours. Amen? There, there, I, I read this something you know, in a book somewhere that the author said, there's a lot of gifts in heaven, but they continue to be unwrapped because the people who are supposed to receive them never jump up like the blind man, never realize that they need to take something what is theirs. You see, they are healing. That's for you. Forgiveness, for you. 
restoration of broken relationships for you, advancement for you, favor for you, bondage breaking, free from addiction, change of heart, and others many to mention, take what is yours, just like the blind man. Amen? In verse 50, he threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. You need to take action. You need to move. You need to go to church. You need to be discipled. You need to join a ministry. You see, sometimes we look at the ministry because, oh, the, need, the church needs, you know, the church need people to, uh, to work in the church. No. You need to join a ministry for you to grow. I'm so very thankful uh, to the ministry because the ministry is teaching me to stay as a believer. Do you know that the ministry can teach you how to grow? In verse 52, Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. Immediately, he could see and began to follow Jesus on the road. Sinabi ni Jesus, Makakaalis ka na. Magaling ka na. Dahil sa iyong pananampalataya. Hindi dahil sa takot, you are healed because of your faith, not because of your fear. Noon, noon, di, noon di nakakakita siyang muli. Noon di nakakita, nakakita siyang muli at sumunod kay Jesus. No? Dali-dali, nakakita siyang muli at sumunod kay Jesus. The answer, learning to ponder number three. As I end. Jesus is alive. Amen? Do you agree? Jesus is alive? We just celebrated Easter Sunday. Right? We proclaim that He is alive. Here's the truth. We are the only faith or the world called us religion, but we don't call it religion, we call it relationship. We are the only religion who celebrates annually the risen Lord. Amen? Nobody, no other religion is doing that because until now, their God is still dead. Jesus is alive. Before He created the earth, the heavens, and anything else, He is alive. Jesus is alive throughout the history. He is alive until now. He is alive tomorrow and He will be alive for eternity. Amen? You see, Jesus is alive and He also listens to us. He sees us. Our faith will play an important role. I'll repeat it again. Our faith will play an important role. Fear will paralyze us. You have to choose faith over fear. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. He never said, Go, your fear has saved you. Right? Fear is what if. Faith is even if. Fear is what if if I didn't if I don't pass? What if if I don't I have a child in the future. What if, if? That is fear. Right? Faith is even if. Even if I don't pass. Even if I don't have a child in the future. Even if blah, blah, blah. Even if blah, blah, blah. I will still remain. As Job said. Right? He gives and he takes away. But I will choose to say. Blessed is the name of the Lord. That is faith. Amen? And after Jesus forgives you, heals you, and freed you, follow Him. Tell the person next to you, follow Him. Do you in practice? Sinabi ni Jesus, makaalis ka na. Magaling ka na. Dahil sa inyong pananampalataya. Noon, di nakakita siyang muli at sumunod kay Jesus. 
follow Jesus. What it really means to follow Jesus in 2024. Forget about porn. Forget about gossip. Forget about greed. Forget about alcoholism. Forget about cigarettes. Forget about uh, vaping. Forget about selfishness. Forget about rudeness. Forget about adultery. Forget about laziness, etc., etc., etc. Because following is focusing on your helper, following after him. You turn around from sin and follow Jesus. You don't turn around from sin and turn around 100, uh, three, what is it? 360. You just turn around 180 and keep on following Jesus. Amen? So that your blindness will be gone. Baon, pinay take out. You see, we need to understand that we are talking about a blind man, legally blind, clinically blind, scientifically blind, healed by Jesus. Do you know that this is also a representation of a person who is spiritually blind and you can be healed by Jesus if you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen? It is not enough to come to Christ for spiritual healing. But when we are healed, we must continue to follow Him that we may honor Him and receive instruction from Him. Those who have spiritual eyesight see that the beauty, that beauty in Christ which will draw them to run after Him. This afternoon, if you are here and you need physical, emotional, psychological, mental, and spiritual healing, we invite you to come to the altar. I would like to call on the pastoral staff to help me here. We will anoint you with oil. All right? If you need forgiveness, no, or you have been spiritually blind for so long, come to the altar. If you need, uh, if you are here and you need physical healing, come to the altar. Emotional, psychological, mental, and spiritual healing, come to the altar. Your pastors are here. They will help you through and pray for you. Amen. I'd like to ask everybody to please stand. And if you, have, if you need nothing from the altar, please grab a person, grab a partner, or form three or four in a, in a group. And... Uh, uh, share your takeaway and pray for one another. Let's do that. As our worship sings, come to the altar. Let's do that. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Let us sing this song as a prayer for hearts. Hallelujah. The Father's arms are
Let's sing it again. Oh, oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the word was heard. Your gospel was heard. Lord God, I pray that you also heard your people as they cry out for you from complete healing from all physical, spiritual, emotional, mental, psychological healing that they need. I speak of healing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Let's give the clap offering for God. Hallelujah. Please be seated and let's all watch this.